you need to write the state of the art for your thesis or report. It should give the reader the minimum amount of knowledge needed to understand the topic and paint a broad picture of the field containing the current trends and major contributions. My name is Elvis Villachá and I'm a PhD student on computational mechanics. In this video, we will look at how to write the state of the art for your thesis or report. We will share some ideas and resources and apply them to a few practical examples. Our main source of information will be academic papers and books. We must find them, organize them and understand them in order to write a complete state of the art. Repeating this process one time after the other until we are satisfied with our own understanding of the topic and the document we have written. Check out our video on finding and organizing research material. In this video, we will focus on maximizing our understanding of the material. First things first, what are we really trying to do? Sure, we are trying to write a state of the art, but what does that really mean? What should we take away from it and what should our readers take away from it? As we said before, the main goal of the state of the art is to promote the understanding of the main concepts in a field and how they are related, including the current trends in the topic and major contributions. Keep in mind that there is a certain Russian doll aspect to all of this, where new definitions are introduced during our classification efforts and vice versa. This may sound too abstract, but I will show you that it makes sense. The best place to start is a well-written and influential paper. Perhaps your supervisor got you one to get things started. Another good place to start is a chapter in a good book. But even Wikipedia can be a good place to start. Right now the goal is to understand the main concepts. A good place to find some clarification is Mortimer J. Adler's and Charles Van Doren book How to Read a Book. According to their Rule 5, find the important words and through them come to terms with the author. So our task seems to have two parts. The first is to find the words corresponding to the main concepts and the second is to understand what the author means by them. There are two main giveaways. The first is that when we read a sentence that uses these words, we don't really understand it fully. And the second is that the word comes up very often in the text. Highlight these words and keep in mind that these are your targets for understanding. Looking at the paper Determining Optical Flow by Horn and Schunk, I have already highlighted some words that I don't understand and seem important in the abstract. If I look them up using Ctrl F, we can see that for sure optical flow is a main concept. Brightness is also something the paper seems to harp on about. Quantized appears a few times and coarsely just one. Whatever quantized and coarsely mean, the first is probably much more important for our understanding of the paper. If we are looking at an influential and well-written paper, it probably pays off to do this search on the whole paper. Start by the abstract, then go on to the introduction. Follow up with the conclusion and then go on to the rest of the paper. If the paper is not so good, you will probably profit by spending less time looking at it. We now have the tools to find the words corresponding to the main concepts. Next, we need to understand what they mean. And that means giving a definition using only terms we understand. It is fairly common for the author's definition to be very close to the first time the word is used in the text. In our toy example, this is exactly what happens for the term optical flow. Still, sometimes the author's own definition uses terms that we do not understand. If the author does not provide a direct definition, we can probably get it from context. For example, for the word quantize, there is no direct definition in the text. But if we search for it, we can understand that it means divided. To understand the concept or idea from the context in a paper, we can follow the awesome advice given by Michael Nielsen, a quantum physicist, science writer and computer program researcher. Do multiple passes over the paper. In each pass, register only the pieces that you do understand, ignoring for the moment the rest. He recommends saving your new understanding in the Space Repetition app called Anki. Check out our videos about it. But you could just as well register your new understanding in the paper's notes in Zotero, for example. As we repeat this process, we understand more and more of the context and the pieces start to fall into place bit by bit. Once you feel that you have exhausted the paper you are reading, move on to the next. It will be for sure much easier to understand now that you get most of the main concepts in the field. 
We now understand the main concepts. We have given their definitions. We now need to connect and classify them. To do this, we pose some questions. The five whys and one age can help you get started. Let's look at our toy example of optical flow again. We can start posing some simple questions like When is optical flow used? This will probably lead to a section on the applications of optical flow. How is optical flow computed? This will probably introduce a section detailing different ways we can compute optical flow. Why is optical flow relevant? This will start a discussion on different techniques that can achieve the same thing as optical flow. We can look at the advantages and disadvantages of each of the methods. Of course, these are general questions, but as we read deeper and deeper into the literature, we get a feel for the important questions that really structure the field and will help us write a more complete state of the art. As we strike more and more papers of our reading list, we start to accumulate a lot of opinions about the different questions we have posed. If we take care to collect them into the sections corresponding to the questions, our state of the art starts to take form. There are a few different tools that can help you flesh out the structure of your state of the art. You can start by the reference managers. The simplest one is to organize papers into folders in your reference manager according to the author's opinion on a given question. Next, we can use a free mind mapping tool such as Freeplane to organize the excerpts and notes on different papers. Dockier, which is based on Freeplane and Jabref, does the automatic import of all the highlights of papers, PDFs, making your job easier. Finally, for high-level mind mapping, you can also use GraphViz. It is an open-source graph visualization software. I hope these ideas and resources will help you write a complete and enlightening state-of-the-art for your thesis or report. Take care.